Hi, my name is Pam Denny. I'm the analytics architect for the Maximo products, and today I'm so excited to introduce a new feature to the Maximo result sets, and that is the ability to export the contents to a CSV format. So let's get started with today's presentation. And I'm gonna first talk about the result sets as we had them configured in Maximo 7.6 with the functionality. And then I'll talk about this new CSV functionality that we're introducing in Maximo 7.604, and then we'll follow that with a demo. So to start off, Maximo 7.6 was introduced in December, 2014. And with Maximo 7.6, what a major feature update was the use of report object structures. And this is important for two key reasons. First off, it greatly extends the data that your users can include in their result sets. So prior to 7.6, I could have a work order query and I could see data from work order. But if I wanted to bring in data from assets or job plans or some other object, I couldn't do that. But now in 7.6, 7.6, I can do that by utilizing a report object structure. And that is the second key important point I want to make is now that we are using report object structures in result set, we are continuing to capitalize on existing functionality. Report object structures are the cornerstone of QBR ad hoc reporting. We also utilize them in the Cognos metadata and now we have updated the functionality to also utilize them in result sets. So what does this mean? You can create one powerful report object structure and utilize it in those three key areas, result sets, Cognos metadata, and QBR reporting, very, very importantly. So what is a report object structure? Well, you can see it about in the middle of the page here, and it is a collection of database objects. We join them together in a hierarchy format. So in this case, I have a work order parent object and I bring in child objects. These are pre-joined by an administrator in the integration object structure application. And he joins the objects together with max relationships or what essentially are SQL joins. So now that we utilize these in Maximo 7.6, the user basically follows Oh, 7.6, excuse me, for the result sets, the user basically follows the same UI as he did for QBR ad hoc reporting. He has a report object structure. He navigates through the hierarchy. He seals what fields are available to them. And then he navigates or brings the individual fields down into the selected field section. You can see that better here in this um, screenshot. Here again, I was bringing in data from work order and assets, and then you build up the contents that eventually displays on the start center. So here, if you can see really, really closely, there's some data or attributes from the work order object. And then I left these labels to show that I'm bringing in data from the asset object. So I've got work order followed by asset, and you can see it closely if you look at the individual labels, like asset description, asset manufacturer, asset vendor, et cetera. So what we've done in 7604 is continuing with the feature update as we take those contents that are now within our individual result set and we've made an available a download icon. And if you click on this download icon, which is expanded here, the contents of the result set is exported and transformed to a CSV file that the user can then work with. Okay, so again, 7604 introduced in March 2016, we've added a result set export button, which transposes the contents into a CSV file that the user can then work with. Very, very powerful functionality. So let's talk about the business rules associated with this. First off, uh, security. There's no additional security requirements for this download button. If you have access to a result set, the download button will be available to you. And that leads to the second point. The download button will be available to you if there is a report object structure configured for that result set. 
Again, to repeat that, you must have a report object structure configured for the result set for the download button to be active and available. In terms of the download itself, a CSV file is produced. That CSV file is located in the user's default browser download location, and how you configure that will vary by browser, whether you're using IE, Firefox, or Chrome. But again, it's going to go to the default location. This is the same location that we utilize for application downloading. So if you remember from any application, application, excuse me, on the list tab, there's a download button on the far right hand side. And if you click that download button, a CSV or XLS file is created and that's going to go in the same exact location as this one. And then the contents of the file itself, it basically contains the contents of whatever you defined in your result set. So the best way to describe this functionality is actually to show it to you. So I'm going to come over here to a Maximo 7604 instance. I've signed in here as Mike Wilson. And let me start by developing a result set. OK, I'm going to do this a little bit quickly just because I think many of you are familiar with this functionality. So again, all I've done here is add a result set. I'm going to click Edit. And now I want to build this, OK? So what do I want to build? Well, every result set is associated to an application. So let me start with WoTrack. I'm going to grab that. And as soon as I do that, watch what happens. Let me do that again. I'm going to cancel out of here just so you can see it. It's really important. I don't want, I just want to cancel that. No, I don't want to save my settings. OK, let's do it again. Edit. Watch what happens. Come over here, Woe Track. As soon as I click Enter, see how my object over here is blank? So I'm going to select my value Woe Track and see how this is populated. So this is showing me my report object structure associated with our work order tracking application. And again, that report object structure is a collection of database objects pre joined and it enables my user to build a data set from multiple applications. This lookup here is available if your application may have multiple report object structures. I'm going to utilize the one I have, but I just wanted to highlight that. And before I move down here, I note, notice this required field that I always forget to populate, but let me quick grab that. That's the query or the filter that I'm going to build my result set against. So what am I going to do here? Well, I'm going to build up my query. And again, I have two major sections. As I navigate through my object structure, notice how the fields refresh. So from work order, I have 162 fields available to me. I don't have anything selected. If I go down to locations, notice how that drops to 76. There's only 76 attributes in the location objects that are available to me. So let me build this. I'm going to go for work. Um, and I can click on it many different ways. I can click on the checkbox and add it. Or let me pick another field here from description. I can just double click on it or single click on it, excuse me, and it will auto automatically add the date or the date, the description. Oh, goodness, getting tongue tied here. So let me grab status, work order de uh, description status. Let's grab type, a couple more fields from work order. Now let me navigate down here to asset. And asset, I'm going to grab a couple other fields. Uh, let's grab asset num. I'm going to grab a couple of unique fields, manufacturer, vendor. Let me just quickly add these, and then I'll show you what I'm doing on the bottom in my selected field section, install date. So what I've done, again, is I started out from work order. I added four fields here. I came down to asset, and now I created a number of other fields. You can see that by each one of my asset fields starts off with the word asset, and you can also see it here by the relationship from work order to asset. So I have a couple of decent fields. So let me click Finished. And now what you're going to see in 7604, again, this starts with 7604, is this Download button. In prior releases or fixbacks, 
that download button was not available. So now what's going to happen is if I click this button, I am going to see a CSV file which is produced here. And if I click on that CSV file, I get the information contained within my result set in a separate format. And again, that's going to go in the location of the user's defined download folder within his browser. So really simple but very powerful functionality enabling you to export the content of the result sets over here. But let's say we don't want to do that. And let me show you a couple of different things or a couple of those different business rules that I talked about. Well, let's change our application. And in this case, I'm going to select Purchase Rex. So it says my changes are going to be lost. Yes, I know my changes are going to be lost. But there's a couple of really interesting things here that when I selected purchase recs versus work order tracking, and let me do that again, woe track. Again, watch what happens when I select woe track. My report object structure is populated and I see this field here, my object structure. But in the case of PR, when I go to that application, I don't see a report object structure, <clears throat> excuse me, because one is not available for that application and also that that application um, or that field that said object structure name is not populated. So let's see what happens in this case. Well, I'm still going to grab my query. And let me just do a quick filter on PR. And I'll just take all of those fields. So now I have some selected fields. And I click Finished. So now when I look at my uh, result set, and I don't have a lot of good data here, but you can see that there is data in there and I click download, I can cl click on download, but it's not active. So even though it's slightly grayed out, again, because there is no report object structure associated to that result set, the user is unable to export that contents to CSV file format. But if again, I go back over here, let's do this real quickly. Let's try something else. Let's go to asset, I always love asset. So now I see my report object structure. Let's grab a query for asset. Uh, let's grab a couple of quick fields. Um, we'll take all of those ones. I'm going to come down here to location. Select a few fields from location. Again, I can see my location fields in my available section versus my fields from assets. Let's save that. Oops, I should have hit finished, excuse me. Click finished. Here's my result set populated. There's a download button. There's my CSV file. I can open it up and work with it. So again, what we've done here today in the video is I've described at a top level how result sets utilize report object structures, those same report object structures that you can use for QBR ad hoc reporting and the Cognos metadata. So in 7.6, those result sets are now available to use report object structures. And then we showed, which are over here, and then we showed you how in 7.604, which was introduced in March 2016, uh, the download button is available. And if I click on the download button, it creates a CSV file that contains the contents of that result set. So with that, I'd like to thank you very, very much for your time. Thank you.